Yes, Tacoma, the sound. Good morning, everybody. This is Casey Krolchek, and you're listening to Across Campus on 90.1 KUPS, the sound. We've got Safe Men here in the studio today with Chris Louth and Ian Fox representing the club. So, you guys, great to have you on the show today. Thank you. It's great so, to be here. Thank you. So, yeah, I, yeah, I want to introduce you guys to our listeners. So, if we want to start with Chris... Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. What year of school are you in? What are you studying? All right. Um, so my name is Chris Loth, and I am in my senior year here at the University of Puget Sound, studying uh, mathematics with a little bit of physics and Spanish in there to keep things exciting. Um, and yeah, this is this is my third year being involved with Safe Men, and this year I am the president of the organization and the club on campus. So it's been a really Good start of the year so far, getting some discussions going. It's been really fun. Sounds awesome. Yeah. Were you were you able to study abroad and get, stretch your Spanish? I was. Yeah, I was in Ecuador last fall semester. Yeah. Oh, sweet deal. It was really nice. All right, Ian, how about you? Uh, well, my name is Ian Fox. I'm from St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, I'm a sophomore here. Um, I'm studying writing, rhetoric, and culture with a minor in politics and government. Um, I don't really know what my position is in safe men <laughs> you send out the emails yeah, that's what i get every week uh, but yeah uh, so i've been in safe men for this is my second year and so all the time i've been here um i'm i work in the sssj office as an interfaith coordinator the spirituality service and social justice office uh i'm the president of minnesota club i am yeah. i'm also the vice president of hillel the jewish club uh i am a pso leader etc uh Jack of all trades. I mean, I do what I can. <laughs> no kidding, yeah. Well, I, I thought it would be interesting to note for our listeners, we've got three Minnesotans here in the studio, and this is just by chance. I sent an, sent an email to Ian, knowing that he was a member of Safe Men, and I get the emails a- every week, but uh, the two guests that end up showing up, two Minnesotans, yeah. and your host, also from Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. Minnesota. But yeah, maybe maybe it's maybe it says something about about our our culture yeah. coming from Minnesota. Nice. Yeah, we're, we're good people. We're nice gentlemen. I would say so. <laughs> Minnesota nice. Absolutely. It's, it's sort of in the title. Well, not really, but. All right. So I I was talking with some of my residents last night at dinner and told them that I was having a show with Safe Men, and their first question was, "What is Safe Men?" And I couldn't give a direct, straight-up answer. So, how, if if someone asks that to you, what do you say that Safe Men is? Um, that's a great question. We get that a fair amount. And Safe Men is a sort of underrepresented or underknown, not well-known group on campus. And it's because we maintain a pretty low profile. We have mainly been a discussion group in past years, uh, as Ian will tell you. Um, <laughs> he was. Uh, confronted with safe men in a very interesting, exciting way. <laughs> I was at log jam as everyone, uh, and last year's president Alex Mann he described it to me as um, deconstructing social norms of masculinity, um, which is totally true, but it's not as uh, um, scary as it sounds. It's it's um, for me. It's, it's not like, going to make you jump and say, yeah. "I want to sign oh. sign me up, man." <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but yeah, it, it it's a support group for for men. That's how I would describe it. Yeah, Yeah, um, we get to have all sorts of interesting discussions um, surrounding issues of masculinity and societal pressures that men face and sort of some of the consequences of those pressures. Um, It's a really unique opportunity for us to meet together in a common space one hour a week uh, to just hash out different ideas without having to feel like you need to be politically correct or completely sure of your ideas. It's a good uh, open space for that process. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of the Black Student Union in that respect. Like, they establish their meetings as a safe place. Like, yeah. you can speak, you can speak your mind, get your ideas out there, and I think that's a that's a great asset that you guys have going for the club. And and that's actually a common theme with all of the SDC clubs, the Student Diversity Center clubs, uh, which is run through Zarina Williams and the um, MCSS office. Uh, lots of acronyms. But um, uh, 
one, yeah, it's, it's really cool how we have this safe space on campus where people can go and just have discussions about whatever they want um, and really just feel comfortable speaking um, and all the different clubs within it cover such a wide range, wide range of topics from like gender and religion and uh, uh, sexuality and sexual preference and race and it's, it's really cool. I like it. All right, awesome. What have you guys been up to with the club lately? Well, we have our weekly meetings. Um, we uh, are switching to a Monday at 4 p.m. That's today. That's today. Whoa. Uh, we've been having them on Wednesdays, and we're going to try out Mondays now. Um, we also help out with um, Walk a Mile in Her Shoes, um, which is coming up in a, a bit. Uh, but we help sponsor that, and we help... Um, we help on the day of. And, uh, what else? For those who don't know, Walk a Mile in Her Shoes is a uh, fundraiser type of raising, raising awareness um, for women's violence, and it allows men to walk around in high heels to get sort of putting yourself in their shoes literally to see how it is that they, that women go about their life. And other things that we have been doing have been, as I've said, mainly focused around the discussions that we have in the group. And I've met with um, Roman Christensen, who is part of one of those acronym offices. That <laughs> one, the, of the, one of the many. He's the social justice coordinator within the uh, SSSJ office. Yeah, that's what he does. <laughs> and then, yeah, so he's pointed me in the direction of videos, articles, different discussion topics that have been guiding our some of our discussions it's been really good all right this is cool and about the um, walk a mile in her shoes i've seen i've seen that event before they were doing it at gustavus adolphus college when i when i was i spent one semester there but i saw them do that and they they literally have hundreds of pairs of shoes are those something that you have to supply yourself or is that something that travels around my impression was that you have to find your own um either borrowing them from friends uh or getting getting them yourself that was, that was my impression. All right, guys, you're going to have to start looking around for a size 10 heels, <laughs> 11, 12, depending on, your, depending on your foot size. But, yeah, that's a, it's, a really, it's a really funny event. I hope, that, I hope that we get guys going out to that. So. Yeah, it's a great event. All right, we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Across Campus. We've got Safe Men here in the studio today. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. Ready, ready, ready for this. Hi, this is Brooke Cornelia, owner of the Seattle Supersonics, and you're listening to The Sound. Chris Loth and Ian Fox representing the club. Once again, great to have you guys with us. All right, for this second segment, we're going to be talking about, like, why are group support groups important for men? And I'll let you guys take the lead on this one. Okay. Well, um, I mean, first of all, I think it's, important for, um, for, pe for people and men specifically, well, I mean, women too, but um, within their individual groups, uh, to sort of have an open space where they can just speak um, their minds and share their experiences with each other um, and help each other learn, uh, learn from each of them. Uh, people in general, not just men, need to feel uh, accepted or welcome uh, to a certain community, they need to feel comfortable, they need to uh, have some sort of confidence about themselves in order to go through the world um, in a healthy manner. And I think Safe Men and other uh, similar clubs on campus are a good opportunity for people that feel like they don't have to prove themselves to be something else, to just freely and openly discuss and hash out different influences, different pressures, and think about why it is that they act or behave in certain ways and how different influences affect that. And um, at our opening meeting, we discussed this topic um, with an article that talks about some of the different benefits from uh, specifically men's discussion groups and how certain pitfalls that men fall into uh, can be avoided through this type of facilitated discussion. And well, um, the the article that we that we discussed at that point um, t 
talked about how there are, there are a few different kinds of men. Um, there is like the kind that is insecure about themselves, and so they sort of do not like. There is the kind that's sort of aggressive, or um, you know, there there are, I mean there are infinitely many. Uh, yeah. Really, um, but there were, it was these uh, exaggerated versions, and the idea is that everybody is sort of a mixture of all of them, and with all of them, um, a male, male support groups can help out in in terms of like. Uh, diminishing those insecurities, opening them up more, um, helping them out if they, like, just have a legitimate question. Um, you know, uh, my wife said this, and I don't know how to respond. Or, I mean, yeah. that's probably not going to be the case here, because we're college students. But, you, know, you never know. Um, but, you know, um, just sort of being that, that group for people, um, and whatever and everybody needs is really uh, what, I mean, what it's for. Um, yeah. No, and you, you kind of touched on it, and I, I, I totally agree with you guys in, in the res- in the respect that uh, support groups allow for different voices to come out. And I actually watched a really interesting video the other day. It was uh, one of the. Have you have you guys ever seen TED Talks before? Yeah. It, it was one. It was a TED Talk, and the title the ti- the title of it was the danger of a single story. And long story short, the, the idea behind it was that when you only have one story being portrayed to people about men about women about any race or identity then there is a danger to that and that they can't people people have a hard time imagining the, the the actual variety that does exist and so when you have a support group like this and a safe place where people can speak their minds it's it allows it allows for just the variety to come out yeah. and when you can just have men speak candidly t- together about like problems that they're facing and issues and issues that they've had yeah. it it kind of empowers you to be your own man yeah it's it's very true um i mean i've i've noticed myself that uh through safe men uh, and through that like open space i've become more comfortable with uh my my own opinions and my own um experiences and through that like it even comes out in my other clubs and meetings um that it just i i, I don't hold back as much and that's not to say well interpret that as you will um but anyway uh yeah i I, diversity of opinions is is really important and um which is one great thing about safe men is that with every person that shows up uh we have another world of opinions uh, and of experiences to share um and uh for example uh this year one of my uh friends uh uh who's a transfer student he he started coming to the meetings and like just with that one addition um among others, but you know, that one addition, we have this different perspective. Um, he's from Nebraska. Um, his family is, uh, just has a different outlook on life than some of us. And, and it's, it's just a, it's a cool, it's a cool thing to just have this different perspective on, on the, uh, uh, topics that we discuss. And I think going back to, uh, what you're saying about only hearing one story is interesting because like, that's sort of what we've talked about and thought that when you see commercials in the media about like being a man means like drinking beer with watching sports like having sex with a bunch of women like you only see one definition only one story of what being a man really means but in this club and in other outlets and avenues you can start to see other definitions of masculinity arise and from the the definition that we're shown there are a lot of negative things to have come out of that and I think it's important that we start to redefine masculinity and make it something different than what it traditionally has been. Yeah, I actually I had a really great conversation over the summer with a good good friend of mine and he was saying that, you know, I'm not really I'm not really all that masculine. Like I don't I have all these like fem I, I I admit that I have all these feminine traits. Like I'm sensitive. Like I I think a lot about things that guys normally don't think about. And like, kind of went through all these things that we that we typically associate with the idea of being feminine. But I kind of I I kind of pointed out to him like, isn't isn't this just you being your own man? Like, why can't why can't those traits be masculine? And he kind of, he kind of thought I mean he kind of thought about that for a while. He's like, yeah, I guess that that does kind of make sense. And I I think one of the points of safe men is to give that flexibility to men and to, to, to help them to realize that, that like there are many there there are hundreds of different tra- hundreds of different traits Li- literally anything 
anything that you can imagine you can fit within the masculine identity as long i mean you create it for yourself and i i think i think there's actually a, a common misconception that you know things like sensitivity uh that those are feminine traits and to be honest those are just human traits um and i personally i don't think that those are gender specific um and i think that everybody male and, and female uh, just has a different mix of them and i think that it, it is important to sort of deconstruct <laughs> deconstruct the social norm of masculinity um just because it is so built up in our heads and that you know your friend thought that what he, that he had a lot of not masculine traits but to be honest they're perfectly masculine it's just a different masculine than what we're used to um what than what we're used to seeing pushed on us well it's it's a great feeling when you when you start to realize like i'm these these aren't feminine traits like this is just me being my own man and there's there's a lot there's a lot of security that yeah. comes with that it's quite liberating absolutely yeah all right you've been listening to across campus this is Casey Krolchek, your host, and we've had Safe Men here in the studio with us today. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, you're back. You're listening. We're back. We're listening to Across Campus, and I'm your host, Casey Krolchek. We've got Safe Men here in the studio today, Chris Loth and Ian Fox representing the club. We're going into our third segment, uh, and we're going to be talking about relationships and the differences between men and women in relationships. So this was the conversation that you guys had last week at your club meeting. Yes, that's correct. All right, and so what, how, how did the conversation go? Um, so Ian found an interesting study, an interesting article, that discussed some of the different uh, impacts that men and women have from their relationships, either from being in intimate relationships or from the what it's like not being in an intimate relationship. And some of the studies, were, some of the results of the study were pretty interesting. Um, yeah, like, uh, it talked about, yeah, so uh, it talked about how, um, like, the stress of a, an, up, an ups and downs sort of relationship, a roller coaster relationship, um, it's more likely to affect the mental health of young men than it is uh, women. Um, and that uh, a recent breakup is actually more likely to affect the mental health of young women more than men, um, and that uh, uh, women, young women are more emotionally affected uh, than their romantic partners uh, when it comes to uh, whether or not they're in a relationship, just the fact of being in a relationship or not. Um, and so we talked about the why that is on both sides. Um, I mean, we can sort of, we could only speculate uh, on the women's perspective, um, but we, we found it interesting just these uh, divides, um, and that some of them, you know, uh, seem more um, likely in society, like, you know, uh, women being more affected by a breakup, like, we, we always see that, we have that image of our in our head of, like, girls, like, sitting on the couch watching romantic comedies with ice cream or whatever, <laughs> uh, but, um, and, like, so, like, that that's, like, no surprise to us, because, like, we've seen it in the media, um, but, you know, why, why is... Uh, why is it more stressful on a man to be in a in an ups and downs sort of relationship? Like uh, we we talked about that. Um, we did, I mean, as as usually, we didn't come to any sort of definitive conclusion, and that's not the point. Uh, the point is just to have the discussion. Well, what were what were some of the sides that came up in that in that talk? I, one of the more interesting points I found um, when we were discussing was about the way that men are affected in intimate relationships. Has to do, I, I thought mostly with the fact that in uh, show in TV shows and movies and things, men are seen as like an island, like the lone ranger or like the, the lone wolf, the alpha male. Um, and they're not encouraged to confide in other men or to share some of their thoughts and ideas. So they're sort of an emotional, like they're all they have. They're supposed to hold up to themselves. And I think when a man gets in a relationship, he finally finds that he can start to open up with a woman and because it's more uh, there's he doesn't have he has one point of intimate contact whether it be sexual or just emotionally opening up and if that were to be up and down type of relationship then his mood would be more affected by that 
whereas women in general tend to have more close friends that they can share their yeah. feelings and emotions with so that if something goes wrong with the guy they can sort of fall back on their women friends but if if the case where the men is having a hard time in his relationship he sort of in general deals with it more on his own yeah i did a media study class with dexter gordon last semester and we did we did some of these studies on on masculine identity and hyper masculinity and I think one of the interesting points that came out was that, like, I mean, you kind of, you kind of pointed out pointed out that in the media, uh, you generally see this image of violent of a, of a violent, purely sexual man who can kind of, who, who can kind of just do it all himself. And he doesn't have to rely on on anybody else, and that's a pattern that you see uh, across across films and in, in music and all over the place. And the interesting pattern that that I, that we saw in doing this study of media. Was that it's getting to be more and more pronounced? Like violence is becoming even more of a central part to masculine identity than it than it was just just even twenty, thirty, forty years ago. And so, and, and we and we and we did talk about that as well. Like uh, men have a, have a much harder time fostering close relationships with other, with other men and women, but women on the other hand. Uh, just with the social constructs around them, it's a lot more okay to be open and close with other women. So when you do have when you do have a long term relationship or just a very close intimate relationship, and there's that support group that they can that they can usually fall back on. And I, and I don't want to assume that's for all women, but this is gen- generally speaking that's the case. Whereas men aren't being taught to foster these close relationships, and I mean that's something that we have to deal with and work through. And, and I think I think what you just said is really important too. That men aren't being taught that that uh, that they can have those uh, those kinds of relationships, and they don't see like people that they that they look up to um, having that sort of relationship with other people. Um, and I mean, I think it'd be kind of ridiculous to say that uh, all men that like no man has this sort of uh, support system because I mean that like. We uh, men do. I mean, I I have friends that I confide things in, and like, uh, but but I think what's important is that that isn't being reflected in society, and that um, and that what needs to happen is well, one uh, people need to have that support group, uh, and that's why we're here, and two uh, just to sort of uh, tone that down a bit in in the media, even though that's a vague term. Well, it's all about just like the images that we're giving out to people on kind of a, more of a macro base. I mean, you guys, you guys kind of said like, I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't blame any specific element of our society, but just putting images out there that would encourage men to develop close relationships with other men and women, and to show people that that's okay. I mean, you, you have to have those representations out there. Yeah, an interesting uh, part of my study abroad experiment experience, we talked about uh, how gender norms and stereotypes differ across different cultures, but a, a common theme, like, in where I was in Ecuador, there's a lot of, like, homophobia, but also, like, some homoeroticism type relationship, which you get a lot here as well, and in, in that context, for men, like, you're supposed to be strong, the breadwinner, um, like not showing your emotions, not showing that you have a weak side, a weak side, so to say. But um, the context where it's okay for a man to open up um, are through sports or through consuming alcohol. And it's okay, like it, you, could, you couldn't hug a man in public, but if you were at a pub and you'd had some beers and you were watching a, a soccer game, then it was all right to like put your arm around the other guys and show camaraderie. And it was interesting that they... You, in many cultures, you have to use alcohol as an outlet to get closer with the men around you. Yeah, and just this just was a, something that popped into my head. Uh, a lot of guys in my in, in my hallway joke about like the bros around campus and showing like bro love. Uh, what do you what do you guys th- what do you guys think of that? Like, uh, part of me thinks that I mean, part of it seems like hyper masculine to me, like very stereotypical. But other times, it's like I'm hanging with my bros. This is. Like my time with my guys, and so part like part of me has thought like that sounds really positive. Like we should we should we should have those connections between men. I, yeah, I mean, from, 
I think I think it's perfectly healthy. I think it's totally fine. Um, yeah, I think there there are people that project their like quote unquote broness uh, more than others. Um, but, uh, <laughs> we're using we're using rough terms yeah, here. Are, this is not a scientific <laughs> field that we've <laughs> established yet, but uh, but but you know uh, that's fine to have have like bro time. Like seriously, that, that that's completely fine. Um, just to have ha- and have that sort of uh, uh, definition of this is just going to be us time. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's been really interesting. I, I joined a fraternity a couple weeks ago. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, Sigma Alpha Epsilon, and it's been really interesting for me to like go through it and like see this other world <laughs> of only of of masculinity. I mean, it is it's all men. That's the point. Uh, <laughs> uh, and and um, I don't know. I, I can't speak for the other fraternities on campus, and I can hardly speak for this one. But my experience so far um, has been really interesting. Um, it's definitely a lot of that camaraderie and a lot of that sort of like this is our space. This is a man's space, and that we can be completely open. And so, and that's and that and that's it's really cool so far. Um, it's it's sort of yeah. It's 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 kind of like big, more rough, safe men so far. <laughs> <laughs> a bigger, a bigger, rougher safe men. Huh, that sounds, that's fascinating. And that made more sense in my head, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, there, there have been plenty of moments where, I, where I've actually, like, enjoyed, I've, en- I've enjoyed having those bro moments. Like, I, I, I have a good friend, his name is Alex Brush. He uh, invited me over to his house, and we had a bro Rito night. Where it, was, it, it, was a, it, was a, it was a lot like just having burritos, but at the same time, it was a lot more than that. Like, <laughs> you're making burritos, and it's with your best bros. Yeah. And it makes it so much more than just eating a burrito. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you have it. deep. Yeah. It is deep. <laughs> it is deep. And, and well, I think uh, sports teams can serve a similar purpose, like, similar to fraternities or to support groups. Like, it's just a good place for you to bond with other members of the campus community. Absolutely. So, what about you guys in your lives? Like, where do you guys find those masculine cl- connections? Like, of course, of course, you have the club. Do you guys? Do you see those other guys from the club around campus? Do you foster those connections elsewhere? Yeah, um, there's some connections through uh, club members around campus, but also I've been uh, active with the cross country and track teams, so I've found um, a good sense of community there to foster those type of relationships. But it's been it's been tough um, being able to try like with to being like one person within a sports team to counter the years that have been going into uh, different traditions and different uh, I guess just cultural aspects with any team. So it, it's it's been interesting trying to make that a safe space as well for discussion. But it's been. It's been good. And so, how has that developed? Like when you first got comparing it with when you first got to the team, and you're in your senior year now. Yeah. What kind? What 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 kind of legacy do you hope to leave behind? That's it's a bit. It's a it's a bit. It's a big question, but actually, is. <laughs> but um, I mean, my first couple of years, like the older men on the team were very, um, well, I mean, not not very like bad but like they would just s- s- say subtle things that you would hear anywhere like uh, man up or like stop acting like a girl or like you're being a wimp and like things like that that like aren't very encouraging for members of your team and it's also like sort of borderline sexist and just like behavior you wouldn't really want to hear with it kind of promotes it kind of promotes that single story yeah exactly and I think over the years, it's been sort of starting to raise more awareness, and people have been more conscious of the things they've said. And I think the the team has been uh, moving in a positive direction. All right, that's great. Yeah. What about you, Ian? What, where have you been able to find close relationships with other men around campus, or just in your personal life in general? Um, well, I, uh, uh, I I guess um, a lot of my friends are just sort of uh, are guys, just because that sort of happened. Um, and that's sort of from where I lived last year. Um, where did you Where did you live last year? I lived Harry- in Harrington. Harrington, okay. Substance-free way to be. 
uh, and uh, uh, and so uh, I'm best friends with my roommate. I have uh, friends from uh, not from Minnesota Club because I guess it's new. So I guess they're my friends and who join Minnesota. Club. They're they're pr prospective friends. Yes. Prospective friends. Yes. Uh, but um, you know, I I, I have I, I actually did get a lot of uh, friends through uh, of all places one of my jobs in the library and tech services and media services. Um, it's just a lot of time to just hang out at the desk, and um, I, I made some good friends there, uh, guy friends, and it's it's it, it's actually kind of interesting the kind of the kinds of discussions that we have just sitting at the media desk. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's I think it was interesting that you mentioned your the hallway that you lived in last year because that's part part of what I'm trying to do in in my hallway. I mean, that you you're you're taught as an RA all these different things about. Uh, allowing people to be who they want to be and bringing out their bringing out their identities and allowing allowing them to be the men and women that they want to be and creating an environment that's conducive to that and so uh, that that's that's what I'm doing a lot of time like when I'm when I'm, when I'm in my hallway and somebody throws out like a, oh that well that was really gay like you I mean you have to kind of point out to them like is that is that is that really the adjective yeah yeah is that is that really the adjective that you wanted to use for that like you know some guys, some, some guys do do like this or that, or do things this, do this way. But I've been I've been like on a, on a kind of a more personal level, just in my hallway. Like I try I try to discourage those words that put men into boxes, and I think like that's that's like the power behind uh, being in a, in a res life position. So, yeah. and uh, we actually talked about this um, a bit last year when Safe Men had a, one of our joint meetings with Vava. Um, we talked about just sort of the use of words like you know, uh, in out of context or to us, what are out of context? Like like this is so gay, or um, I mean I, I I don't know any other examples really, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know stuff like that, and just sort of being able to actually take a step back and just say to that person like, do you understand what you're saying? And um, you know it can be actually annoying to the other person if you're just sort of sitting there critiquing them, but. Uh, it's sort of worth it just to make them stop and think, um, and especially in like a in a hall where you're creating this open atmosphere. Um, it's pretty important to have that. Well, and we we just at a recent staff meeting, we talked about having a pocket phrase, mm -hmm. something that you just like when you when you hear something and it bugs you, you don't have to turn to them and go, "That wasn't right what you said," but you can have a pocket phrase like, "Whoa, dude," or like. Hey, wait, a, wait a second. It was just something that like slows down the situation for, for the mood too. Because if people feel like they're being attacked for what they're saying, then they're going to become defensive rather than actually thinking about why someone might be offended by what they're saying. Yeah, and the the, the objective is to start a discussion, yeah. and I think that that's where you get like the most constructive uh, work is when you ha when you have people just talking openly and candidly about it, and. I mean, that's that, that's where, that's where I've seen like the most positive change in our hallway. Like, there's, I mean, I've I've noticed like a change in language like since since we started with the hallway, and it's about like getting like being there right at the very beginning and setting up that culture. Like you kind of talked about it with with the track team, but like an established culture is a big deal. And with the hallway, uh, there is no established culture when when everybody gets there. So you kind of it's, it's really fun because you get to create it yourself. But yeah, so it's been a great conversation so far. We're, we've had safe men here in the studio with us, and uh, we're going to take a quick break. You've been listening to 90.1 KUPS, The Sound. All right, we're back. You're listening to Across Campus on 90.1 KUPS, The Sound in Tacoma, Washington. My name is Casey Krolchuk. I'm the host of the show, and we have safe men here in the studio with us today with Chris Loth and Ian Fox representing the club. So it's been an awesome talk so far guys so i really appreciate having you guys in the studio it's been a pleasure all right and we actually we will have to let go of chris loth uh in just a couple in just a couple of minutes because loggers are first and foremost students and we have obligations to class yes, sir. so this la in this last section we when we were putting this together last night we i just labeled it education because there were se there were several different elements that we wanted to talk about for like i mean straight up the education system, elementary school, middle school, high school, college, and then also kind of more informal settings where men are taught to be men. And so, yeah, like what, I mean, I'll let you guys start that out. 
Uh, so the context with the education is there's many, many, many aspects to it. Uh, whether it's informal or formal schooling, um, you're educated from a young age of what being a man is, what it means, um, and how you can fit into those roles. And through the years, um, whether it's in elementary school, when you're told to, or as a, as a baby even, like, to stop crying, like, don't be a girl, like, you've started to suppress some emotions, and that's sort of at the early stages when it starts to be a problem later on in life when you've had these emotions pent up and built up inside of you, and then they all of a sudden start to come out. And then later in college years, and recently, you'll see that since like the feminist movement, like in the 70s, you, you've seen a rise of women in college and in positions of power and a decline of men, decline of graduation rates, more problems with drug and alcohol abuse, and there hasn't really been things that have shown that that's not, or that have been done to counter that. And when you see like a typical movie that represents a college scene, men are seen as partying and drinking in fraternities, and you don't really see that in the classroom it's the men who are struggling and falling behind. And it, men aren't encouraged to like be studious and to work hard because it, it's like a bragging point, like, oh man, yeah, I didn't even really study for that test, and I like did all right, but like, I mean, whatever, it's just class. Like, men aren't encouraged to put a huge emphasis in their academics, and as a result of that, studies are just coming out to show that like, college men are falling behind, not just academically, but socially and emotionally and otherwise. Well, yeah, there's, I mean, there's an element of risk and reward to, I mean, to, to every decision that you make and when you, when you decide not to study, when you, when you bomb the test, man, man, that was, that was so awful. Yeah. I'm going to go do that again next week. <laughs> like, it, it's kind of like, but I mean, why is that, why is that cool? Why does that sound cool? Isn't it awesome if you go in and you, and they, you do well? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> why would, why, like, it doesn't make any sense. Why would we want to discourage that? And why would, why would we make that sound cool? Yeah. But that's kind of the reality that you're facing when you're in a college setting or even high school anywhere yeah and like uh it was interesting coming in last year um i i definitely was under the impression for the uh, about the first quarter that you know college students don't really work very hard at the cl their classes they do their assignments like the night before papers you know if you have 24 hours that's more than enough time like you know all that that sort of mindset and um and i found out that that's that's really just wrong that uh, people actually do, first of all, like, they do study, uh, and even if they say that they don't, they do, and they work hard. Um, and that it's really, it's really a pretty bad thing, uh, this perception. Um, yeah, I don't have actually much to contribute, I guess. That. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was, that was fine, that worked great. <laughs> but, so moving forward, like, what kind, what kind of messages do you want to see given out to men, or how do you, how do you like, change the culture around that? I think like just, well from a re from a res life standpoint, I always I always fall back on that because it's my own little test tube place where I get to try different social experiments. But uh, I try to do, I try to give like a fist bump to the guys when I see that they're well guys and girls. But I try I try to encourage like people when they're studying, and I'm and I'm, re and I'm really glad that they've created that so far they've created a really great culture like where they I mean studying is something that they do together. It's something something that they work hard on. And they're churning out great essays. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it's it's really it's really important to sort of foster that sort of community around around specifically like academics, um, like you know having a having study time with your friends where you just you just sit in a room in complete silence and just work. And even and even just doing that, one, you're getting homework done, and two, just being in that room and working together, it actually is kind of good for you guys as, or people. Uh, whatever gender, um, it just in terms of relationships. I mean, you're spending time with each other, and you know sometimes you know you'll sit up and or you know like put your head up and sort of like say I need a break, and so you'll chat and maybe you'll make a joke about like ah oh, this article is so funny, it thinks it's right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, this guy does not know what yeah. he's talking about. Yeah, and like and like even that, like it, it's it's important, and in doing so, you're 
fostering like an academic community because uh, you're getting it, it's it's I mean it's more of an incentive to do homework and it makes it more fun for you. Um, yeah, I don't know. Study study halls and study groups can be really important. Um, yeah. All right, Chris. I know you have to get going soon, but were there any last comments that you wanted to make? Well, I wanted to advertise for Safe Men. We have a meeting this afternoon from uh, 4 to 5 at the Student Diversity Center across from Diversions Cafe. And at today's meeting, we will be talking about uh, the season's TV shows that uh, reinforce uh, gender stereotypes of masculinity and sort of, well, for one, for one thing, uh, one of them is now off air. So it shows that that isn't always a positive. Um, and we're going to sort of talk about how those shows have um, made an impact or caused people to think about masculinity and what it means. Um, so before I run out to class, I want to leave you with some words of wisdom that are, uh, this is the line we put in the bottom of each one of our email messages each week. Uh, to sort of remind ourselves why it is that we take part in safe men. We don't live in a society that honors relationships between men. In fact, our current culture doesn't care too much about its males at all. But that doesn't mean that you can't take care of yourself and develop trusting relationships with a few good men. It'll be worth every bit of your effort. Thanks for having me on the air today. Hi, right, Chris, thank you very much. That's Chris Loth. He's the president of Safe Men and senior at the University of Puget Sound. So this is the last year that you get to enjoy him here. So take advantage of him while he's still on campus, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. So we're just going to be wrapping up the show. It's just going to be Ian and I with our final thoughts and yeah. conversations that we wanted to head. Uh, but yeah, like where, where else did you want to go with that conversation? Like we, we kind of like... It, it was a really dynamic top, topic, like where mm -hmm. where are men taught to be men within the education system? Yeah. And um, I mean, th it, it'd be sort of difficult to just sort of talk about it um, uh, uh, in terms of the entire the breadth of it. I mean, they they literally teach college courses on on masculinity in within schools. Um, like, um, in fact, there's a class here called Schools of Masculinity. Um, but and but I mean, is that is that a class you've taken? Uh, it's not. A friend of mine okay. took it last year. Um, it's in the education, the school of education, um, uh, but it's a it's a course anybody can take. Um, but yeah, and yeah, I feel like there are definitely things within uh, just schools, um, probably uh, like an unbased sort of claim that maybe public public schools would be a little bit more um, uh, subject to this than than private. Um, but that 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 there is sort of uh, inherent reinforcements of gender. Like, um, you know, in, in gym class, you know, locker rooms. Like, I, I feel like that's a pretty classic example of how uh, men sort of, or like boys sort of get their ideas of what me men are. Um, or like uh, within the classroom, like a teacher um, saying like, you know, uh, stop being a girl. Like I, I have literally had teachers um, in middle school that have said to somebody crying, just stop being a girl. And just things like that from a su from a superior figure like that, um, it can be kind of detrimental to a person's um, like um, uh, persona or I, I guess sort of comfort with themselves. Um, and I guess that's not necessarily an inherent thing within the education system, um, but I think that it's an issue um, that that we should be uh, educating the our educators, our teachers about. Um, yeah, and. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe you still can look at it as systemic. Like, I mean, I had a, I had a really interesting conversation with a friend of mine yesterday about uh, capitalism and whether and we we kind of talked about the Occupy Wall Street movement yeah. and whether that was something that was more whether whether they're going after individuals or whether they're or whether it's kind of going after the, whether the pursuit is more of something systemic and. Usually, I mean, I, I don't think there's much value in blaming individual staff, individual teachers and staff members, or just like like you said, positions of authority. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think I don't think it works to really just blame those individuals because they grew up in the same system that that we did. That yeah. that te that teaches you to be a single way, and 
like in that specific instance, uh, men are usually taught that it's not okay to cry. So stop crying. Stop being a girl. Yeah. And so, while you do, like, while it is, while it is important to look at that on an individual basis, like you do need to address that, but you also have to look at the broader culture that people grow up in. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, it's, and, it, and it 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 makes it a really sticky situation because you can't really lay the blame on any single yeah. thing but at the same time you have to move forward and things have to get better yeah and also at the same time you can't really generalize because every situation is different and every experience is different um yeah so it, it's difficult um and that's sort of and <laughs> once again um it's so that's sort of a good thing about having uh, a little group to talk to talk to um whether that's your friends or um, a support group or whatever um I think that, uh, it gives you a sort of uh, more commonality in your experiences, and it allows yourself to sort of, not necessarily general, generalize, um, but to just sort of uh, work through situations and make it more than just about yourself um, and help reflect on it. Uh, yeah. All right, everybody, that's the end of our hour. You've been listening to Across Campus with Casey Krolchik, and that's me, your host. And uh, we've, we've had safe men here in the studio with us today, Ian Fox. And earlier we had Chris Loth in as well. He had to leave a little bit early for class. But yeah, Ian, want to thank you for being on the show. It's been a pleasure having you on. It's been great. Thank you so much. All right. Tune in next week. Again, it's going to be at Monday at 8 a.m. You've been listening to Across Campus on KUPS 90.1 The Sound.